As we get into these coming chapters in the book of Revelation, we're going to be dealing with God judging evil. Um, that's one of the prerogatives that God has, that he has the right to judge evil. He is good and he wants his creation to be set free. And because of that, he has to judge evil. If love is going to be love, then evil has to be held to account. Evil has to be, has to be judged. I like the way that uh, the theologian scholar uh, Jim Packer, J.I. Packer, said it. He said, would a God who took as much pleasure in evil as he did in good be a good God? Would a God who did not react adversely to evil in his world be morally perfect? Surely not. But it is precisely this adverse reaction to evil, which is a, ne as a necessary part of moral perfection that the Bible has in view when it speaks of God's wrath, that God will hold evil's feet to the fire, all of evil's feet to the fire. And as in doing so, uh, there, there's just no pretty way of doing that. And so uh, as we get into these chapters where this is a theme, don't be surprised that God, the good God, the God of love is by being loving, must actually deal with evil and must deal with it in its full extent and on its full terms. And by doing so, it, it isn't pretty, but it is it precisely how a good and loving God handles evil in a creation that he loves so much. So as we, as we delve into this, please keep that in mind that a loving God must judge evil.